Hi, my name is Jeff Livingston and I'm a photographer and I'm here with my friend Angela Pan, who is also a photographer. Hi, Angela. Hello. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Very good. We're doing this workshop together. It's about the yeah. National Monuments and, and you just put out a book on it, which I've got. It's outstanding. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your book. Thank you. Uh, so it took about nine months to create and it's just all of my tips and tricks on photographing the National Mall. I've been photographing the National Mall for well over five, six years now, and I've just had so much experience of where to park, where what metro station to take, what time of day to take those pictures, and so I just put all that information I had into a book, and it's really just to help you, photographers, anybody visiting the DC area, to shorten the research time and just get out there and do what we love doing, and that's photographing um, landscapes, National Mall, whatever. Very cool. And, uh, you know, obviously I've, I've done some of that too. And I think most people, when they think of photographing the National Mall, they think like Lincoln and the Washington Monument and maybe the Jefferson. But, I mean, there are a lot of little monuments down there and some mm -hmm. interesting side views. And I've gone on a photo walk and you've shown, shown me a couple of those. What, what are some of your favorite spots to uh, take folks mm -hmm. on when you're down there that are kind of off the beaten path? Uh, I think my favorite spot, um, first of all, I do really enjoy starting at the Lincoln Memorial where we went on the photo walk, but I think that's just a great meeting point because there's so many great memorials along the way to walk around the mall. Like right next to it is the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, and I love it just because of the emotions that it brings for anybody who visits that memorial, but also the reflections are so great, the line is so great. Um, especially my favorite time to shoot anytime is sunrise and so when you're there you're all by yourself and there's really no other time of day where you're going to get that and it's just such a peaceful um, calming experience you feel so much so grateful for all the names that are up on the wall and even if you go down a little bit further constitution gardens which not a lot of people know about either and it's a great place just to sit hang out um, it's my favorite time to go in the fall because all the trees are leaving or all the trees are changing and all the leaves are falling and it's perfect. Um, and not a lot of people are there any time of the day. So those two, I would say, are my favorite. Yeah. What do you think of the uh, Korean War Memorial? That's like actually one of my favorite night shots only because it's so spooky, you know, with those guys going through the yeah. top, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's not in my book just because of copyright reasons, but the Korean War Memorial is really cool just because um, I think that memorial in particular is great in different environments. Like when it's snowing and you see all the um, snow details and maybe what they're wearing and in the helmets and things like that, or when it's foggy and you get those, you can get the, that atmosphere too, but nighttime is really cool because it's lit up and just, it makes it more dramatic and more impactful the way that you can photograph it. There's that group of monuments and memorials, and then you, you jump over to the Tidal Basin, and there are four, I think, at least that I can think of that are over there. There's uh, obviously Jefferson on the Tidal Basin, and then um, you've got MLK and George Mason, obviously FDR, and then, I mean, you could probably throw the Washington Monument in there because you get some crazy reflecting views off of not just the main tidal basin, but that little uh, little pool on the other side of uh, Independence Avenue. What, what are your thoughts on the tidal basin? Oh, it's one of my favorites. I love it, especially during cherry blossom season. I mean, I feel like it's like the default place to go, but not even cherry blossom. I was just there yesterday photographing the sunrise, and every time you go, it's going to be something different. Unfortunately, yesterday when I went, there was a whole bunch of flooding, um, and... It was really sad to see, but it had some beautiful reflections. And just, I feel like for me, myself, just photographing that flooding and showing people that that's happening right now will bring awareness that the National Mall does need help. You know, it's not, um, doesn't take care of itself. There are um, natural elements that will affect it. And this rain that we got over the weekend in the past week caused all this flooding to happen. And we need our flood walls to be repaired and that's what the trust for the national mall has been doing and i think that um just photographing it can bring awareness to the people but uh tidal basin is beautiful it's 
sunrise, sunset, no matter where you go, you're going to get amazing views. Right. Um, it's interesting. I, it's, uh, it's funny you mentioned that because I think of uh, the Jefferson and how messed up the roof is on the Jefferson and how they've just kind of let that go into disrepair. Mm -hmm. And it looks awful, man. I mean, like if you mm -hmm. I've lived here for mm -hmm. 25 years and just watching that thing deteriorate over the two decades plus that I've been here, it's, it's been sad, you know? So yeah. I, you know, when I look at your photos, they've definitely got that HDR feel to them, right? They've got a lot of vibrancy and color and uh, a lot of texture, right? Mm -hmm. So I was kind of wondering mm -hmm. uh, if you were to give our listeners today any special tips, maybe you could give them one or two. I know it's kind of, it's kind of hard to open up the cookbook unless you're Scott Kelby and you're making a ton of money off of it, but... Uh, no, actually, I don't mind at all. I think that um, my images, like I like to shoot sunrise, sunset, you know, the, the magic hour that photographers like to call it. And I think my biggest secret is that I'm just very consistent. I go out there as much as I can. When I haven't been out there in like two or three days, I just miss it. And I want to go back. I just have um, every day is going to be something different. Um, and it really is for me just getting out there and being consistent, going out, pictures, sunrise, even right now that summertime, sunrise is around 545 in the morning. So That's you should brutal. be there 30 minutes earlier. And I mean, there's no better way to say that. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's just getting out there and doing it. It's a lot of practice. And I've been, like I said before, I've been doing this over five, six years. And the main thing for me, I think, is just practice and getting out there and doing it. Um, if I think I had a second piece of advice, it would be just to photograph what makes you happy. Um, I don't know if that's too similar of advice, but too generic or what it is, but um, just sitting at the edge of the reflecting pool, watching the reflections and the clouds pass by in the water and um, just sitting there in peace and watching the ducks float by. I think it's so much fun. It's so interesting every time. So uh, photograph what makes you happy consistently just keep on practicing and um yeah i think those would be my biggest tips it's if fun. you talked about exposure or photo editing those are two completely different things it's funny i saw amy vitale speak she's a, a nikon ambassador i saw her speak at nat geo i think maybe three or four years ago she said the exact same thing you said in fact she said it kind of like uh, mm -hmm about the morning stuff, uh, she said, uh, if you want to be a real photographer, mm -hmm. you have to be up early. Uh -huh. See things in the morning yeah. before the day begins when people are just starting to stir that you would never see. And she says like literally some of her best photos are early in the morning. And I think that's true whether you're a landscape photographer or street or documentary. Like I know my best, some of my mm -hmm. best shots are at odd times of the day. And particularly in the morning, if I'm there early, I really see some incredible things happen. So it's some good advice there. Yeah, just that early morning light. Yeah, that early morning light you can't beat. And, you know, when I first found out that one, uh, one out of the two times to shoot any kind of subject is sunrise, you know, I've never really used to be a morning person. And when I actually found out and my husband was telling me, oh, yeah, you should wake up for sunrise, I literally cried. I did not want to wake up that early. I did not. I uh, just didn't want to do it. And so, but I just trained my body to wake up now. Like even this morning, I didn't wake up for sunrise, but I still woke up maybe around 530 just because I'm so used to it now, you know? It's, it's crazy how much things have changed. Um, where can people find your book, my friend? So you can find the book on Amazon.com. Just go and search Snap DC, or you can put my name, Angela B. Pan. And uh, my website is abpan.com. I upload a new image on my blog every weekday, and I've been doing it for the past like eight or nine years, which is crazy, and I haven't missed a day. And on social media, I'm abpan.com. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm abpan photo, and you can find me there. <laughs> Very cool. All right, folks, and if you are available on Wednesday night, July 18th, come out and do a fantastic workshop with Angela and myself and Joe Newman, uh, who runs the Focus on the Story Film and Photography Festival. Uh, we're going to do a great workshop on July 18th about night photography in the morning. It's going to be awesome. Well, all right. 
ですか。